Outriders, is there a better way to start your weekend than with the latest edition of the Outriders News? Your source for everything you need to know about World Slayer? All the opinions without the bullshit. The week-long tease of new legendary armor continues today with the Scorch Sea Lock gear set or the Pyromancer. And there is a lot to like about this armor. It has been designed with firepower in mind using Feed the Flames to address ammo replenishment issues and Ash and Burn as debuffs to boost damage. Damage. It has near perfect stats, bonus firepower, close range damage and cooldown reduction along with some healing received. It comes with some great tier 3 mods that will buff damage in Ashen Bloom, Molten Lead, Cauterizing Flames and Voracious Flames as well as some solid tier 1 and tier 2 mods like Ride the Wave, Burnt Out, Ashen Boost and Bullet Absorber. But the one thing that lets this gear set down though, and it's a big one sadly, is the gear set set bonus. While it does add some useful crowd control and debuff opportunities, the damage it does is just shockingly low. I know that 1.1 million looks like a lot, but at level 75 this is like whipping enemies with a silk stocking. Compare this with the mod Death Ray which comes on the weapon Charred Lance. This does 1.7 million of damage every 0.3 seconds at level 75. And what about Firestorm on Sunfall that does 21 million a damage over 8 seconds. This is such a shame as otherwise this is a really good gear set so hopefully we see some buffs to it in the future. Now you might not have spotted it but Burnt Out is being nerfed in World Slayer down from 25% damage with unlimited stacks to 15% and only 2 stacks. That is a huge nerf which really worries me. I don't think people found the base game too easy so I'm not sure why PCF have felt the need to nerf existing mods so much. I'm sure that this is all part of balancing the game in World Slayer and all will make sense in time but I think it would be a great idea for PCF to talk about their philosophy on how damage will work in the expansion so we can all put it into context. I posted a poll a few days ago about the cost of Outriders World Slayer and here are the results. So overwhelmingly people who answered were supportive of paying for the expansion but when you get into the comments you find that many people questioned whether $40 was too much for what we are going to get. And I agree, when you look at games like V Rising that only cost 20 bucks but have a mass of content, you have to question whether we are paying now for the lack of profits that the base game made, which was due in no small part to the issues with the game at launch. Do PCF think that increasing Apocalypse tiers and gaining Ascension points is content? Because I think that this is a lazy way to pad out a game and justify its price. What I am looking for is breadth in a game, new story, new side quests, new zones, new enemies, new classes and in particular new replayable game modes that provide variety. Now to be fair it is clear that PCF will deliver on some of this and I think we should recognize the great design choice they have made in making all of the base game contents relevant in the apocalypse tier grind. But gaining an apocalypse tier on an ascension point feels like a grind and not an achievement. I remember how awesome it was in World of Warcraft to do a raid with your guild and to get that piece of gear from a specific boss that took your build to the next level. So maybe it is time to go back to a model more like that. Make leveling just part of the campaign and side quests. Have replayable content that will allow us to create a good build but have harder content for those sweet sweet pieces of gear that take it to another level. Make the game more social. Give me loadouts and more stash space please. But most of all don't make the game into a job. If you're looking for more Outriders news this weekend check out these videos from earlier this week and I will see you all Monday. Casual out.